What's good, Faith Walkers? Welcome back to the God's Vibes podcast. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Love Month. Happy, happy Love Month. Every month is Love Month, right? Really, every day should be Love Day. We need to learn how to keep our love on around here, all the way up, all the way up. Turn up the love. Don't turn it off. Not truly is a challenge, right? We have this tendency as humans to want to punish people when they don't do what we want them to do, right? But the challenge is, even when you're uncomfortable, even when somebody disappoints you, to not let that turn your love off. Because when all else fails, God never does. And every month is truly love month when you're loved by God. All right? Just a little word. I thought something fun that we could do. We had Galentine's yesterday, and it was so fun. Shout out to all the ladies that joined us for Galentine's. We were cracking up. We ended up staying on the gal's night in for three hours. <laughs> so we had a time. Shout out to all you ladies. It was such a joy investing that time with you and laughing and just connecting. So if you guys weren't able to be a part of that, we have a community called Courage Co. And Courage Co. is a virtual community. It's run through an app. So it's a private app. We've done it that way so that it's off social media to really help you eliminate distractions. And it is strictly to help you invest in you. For the love of you, Courage Co. exists. It's literally there for you to get rooted in a community of like-minded people that are actively investing in themselves, that are courageous enough to do the brave inner work that few, very few, will ever dare to do. So it's a community of people that are investing in themselves, that are growing and developing spiritually, no matter where you are on your God journey. So we offer so many things for free. So building community, we've done a lot of monthly meetups. We'll connect and we'll let folks know when we're doing things so we can meet up in person. When that happens, there are small groups every single day of the week. So depending on whatever your schedule is in this season, you can get plugged into at least one of those, we like to say, where you can be consistent and develop community. We have prayer calls and then we have other trainings for you to plug into. So I do want to let you know, and just for the podcast listeners only, there is a sale going on for Love Month, but it closes on the 15th. So you're going to want to make sure that you take advantage of that. All of the details are going to be in the show notes, but we've seriously marked down all of the prices. I'm talking 30% off on our VIP Mastermind, which is Holy Spirit Boot Camp with weekly live coaching, an entire year of coaching. Come on, with a VIP Mastermind and so many bonuses, that is 30% off. There is a training bundle, which is very powerful. This is full of master classes and challenges. There's over 24. There's a bunch of guest interviews, and that is just a really great thing. The way I would view this is when I am feeling like I need a boost or upliftment or if I'm struggling in some area of my life, I will log in there, pick a topic, and get to work, right? Receive the wisdom and the coaching that is there and set some goals around that. So we have anything from purpose planning to success habits to uh, overcoming drama addiction, relationships redux, just redefining relationships in your life. There's so much goodness in there. And that is crazy savings right now. I think it's only, it's under $200 and it's normally a thousand. So just to give you an idea. And then we have our 30 day faith walking program. So if you've really been wanting to activate your faith and get to walking in it, that's a great program. We're giving away a free bonus journal when you sign up now. So when you sign up, you'll get $100 off. You'll get the 30-day program and a bonus journal. So all of those, you're winning if you take advantage of these sales, okay? So this is a love month flash sale, if you will, but I would take advantage of those offers, right? The Mastermind is a great way to go deep on your inner life. This is designed to be three months if you really sat down and did the work, but you get it for an entire year with weekly coaching, weekly coaching. And the people that you'll connect with in there are real ones. They're lifers. Okay. And then the training bundle is a great thing to plug into. That's a little more self-paced. So if you don't want 
the live coaching if you don't want the community and you just want to take in and absorb and apply it as you can. I think about that when I was working many jobs at one time and was in a really busy season. That would be a way to still keep me encouraged. So that would be a great way to plug that into your life. And the 30-day faith walking challenge is a great way to just challenge yourself. You get access to that for an entire year as well. So you could do it a few times over to really absorb the content that is there. Okay, so all of those are on sale. You've got about 24 hours to make it happen, okay? But I wanted you you guys to know, heard it here first for the love, for the love of you. We wanted to discount all of those in a really silly way just to bless you. So I would take advantage of that. Click on the details in the show notes. If you are in Courage Co., it's www.courageco.org. There's also the most recent post has all of the links there as well. So go ahead and log in and you'll see the post in the main feed and you can just click and get all that you want. One or all of those things. Okay. So something that I thought we could do, I host a prophetic prayer call every other Wednesday morning. Okay. And these are powerful. They initially started as what I thought was just going to be me being obedient and hosting a prayer call and praying over people. And then it just turned into God showing up like he does, and it turned into prophetic encouragement. So I do a lot of prophetic teaching and training. Simply put, that's just being able to hear from God, revelatory wisdom from God, okay? So revelatory word, prophetic word that comes from revelation by the Holy Spirit is really what the prophetic is. And all of us are designed to be led by the Holy Spirit in our life. We are designed to hear God, right? God speaks, we can hear him. That's how it works. (laughs) But many of us are not taught how to do that. So these calls are prophetic encouragement. And I just wanted to give you some gems for your life and also encourage you to get plugged into those. So they are recorded. So you can go back and you can re-listen to those. If you even just did that, that would just feed your soul. I actually transcribe all of the notes. I record it. So you can join us live, which the benefit of that is you get prayed for live. Or you can go back and listen to the replay and review the notes. Okay, so if you go inside Courage Co., www.courageco.org, you can join us from an app on your phone or the desktop. I operate from both, depending on if I'm seated in front of a computer if I'm on the go, right? So you can do the same thing, but you can go in there and you'll see bi-monthly prayer call and there's just a whole slew of them hanging out there. So they're titled, so you'll know what the title is. But today we talked about supernatural acceleration. You heard me. Supernatural acceleration. I almost think of this visually speaking, like you get on a divine conveyor belt. (laughs) Like when you start working these spiritual keys that I'm going to share today, you do. That's exactly what it feels like. It feels like you just get hooked onto this divine conveyor belt and you just get pulled into your future. That's what it really feels like. Things that were once really hard for you, things that didn't make sense for you, things that just never seemed to flow before, all of a sudden you are all up in a flow and you're being pulled forward. You're not trying to force things, okay? You're not trying to manipulate anything. You're not trying to control anything. You're just moving in the flow of God. You're in step with him. You're moving at the pace of grace and things are working for you, not against you. Okay. So we're going to talk about supernatural acceleration. When we are walking with God, we are designed to go from strength to strength and glory to glory. There is no backward journey. Okay. And I will tell you, if you feel like you are in a backward journey, I would check your connection with God, number one. But sometimes what this might look like is that we get it backwards, okay? God is not taking us backwards, but we get it backwards. So what do I mean by this? When you picture a bow and arrow, okay, when you just are pulling back a bow about to launch the arrow, God does that to us sometimes too. It looks like we're not moving. It looks like we're not advancing. It looks like we're, you know, letting God prune off some things in our life so that we can produce more fruit, right? Even when we're producing fruit, God still prunes us to produce more. So it can look like, man, like I feel like this is uncomfortable. I don't really like where I am, but you're not always going to like where you are when you're on purpose, okay? But often God pulls us back like a bow, okay? So that he can launch us even further. So if you feel 
like you are in that season, I just want to encourage you with that vision, okay? You are still going forward and you're going to just launch out. (laughs) So you better be ready. Don't get stuck. Don't settle where you are. When you're in transition, that's when we're vulnerable. That's when we're susceptible to a lot of attack. So I want to get you back into acceleration. And here is how you can almost jumpstart your vehicle, okay? Here's how you can do it. You are the vehicle that Holy Spirit flows through. So here's how you can jumpstart your vehicle, all right? Number one. Numero uno, pursue divine peace. Pursue divine peace, okay? So peace, if you've never thought of it this way, peace is a weapon, okay? Here's why. When you have peace, here's here's how blessed you are. You are not easily manipulated. You don't fall for deception. You're not easily deceived, and you're not easily unhinged, okay? You probably may have been this person or know somebody, of course it's not you, you know somebody who's just come on hinge when life is not going their way, right? They have an expectation that doesn't play out the way they expect it, and all of a sudden they're totally unhinged. They're losing their mind, their emotions are everywhere, no peace, okay? When you have peace, you're not easily deceived, manipulated, or unhinged. Powerful. So fear and intimidation are often weaponized to control in the world because we do different things as humans when we're afraid. Okay, I just want to invite you to think about this for a second. When you are fearful and when you are afraid, how do you show up? What are you thinking? What emotional state are you in? (laughs) Or do you kind of bounce around between, vacillate between? What's going on in your heart? Is it heavy? Is it weighed down? Is it depressed? Like, what is going on when you're afraid? And then what kind of decisions do you make? How do you move? Do you phone a friend and tell them all your problems and vent about what's going on? How do you talk? Are you speaking life? Are you cursing your future and your destiny? Because our words are creating our world, okay? The same power that God has to speak things into being, right? He spoke the world into being. In the beginning was the word, right? The same gift of God we have as well. We possess that same power. So we, when we speak, we are creating with our words. So when you think about it, when you are fearful, when you are afraid, when you're all stuck up, caught up in stuff, you don't show up like a stable genius. You show up like a hot mess, okay? Fear does that. We've seen this. Just picture what was happening when the world in 2020 got all sorts of of news of many things, <laughs> okay? How did people operate? It was like a herd mentality. Somebody screamed fear and everybody ran in one direction, but there was nobody that stood firm and was like, hey, this is a different way, right? So really think about that. How do you move when there's fear? When we are in fear, we can be manipulated. We can be deceived and we gotta be careful. Like I'm thinking about all the people that were running after toilet paper. Like toilet paper, Come on. (laughs) That's what we're going to worry about every day? We're going to go to the store and hoard toilet paper? Like, when you look back on it, it's interesting. Just think about how you moved. How did you move when people were stirring up fear, when people were stirring up uh, all of these different opinions and these things that were not rooted and grounded in truth at all? There was no peace in that. And when you move without peace, you make a mess, always. So fear and intimidation are often weaponized to control the world because people do very different things when they're afraid. Divine peace, however, flows from the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is not something that we can go to yoga and manufacture. This is not something that we can just read about in a self-help book and hope that it's imparted to us. That's not how it happens. Divine peace The supernatural peace that surpasses all understanding flows from the Holy Spirit. Philippians 4, 6 talks about this. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. So you are going to have a very real temptation to freak out. You are going to have an opportunity to lose your mind or to get swept up into your emotion. But your mind does not control you. No to your emotions. You can actually control those, have dominion over those, okay? Here's the strategy. When your mind is racing, when your emotions are starting to stir up some things, don't worry. Worrying is a choice. That's what this verse is telling us. Instead, pray about it. Pray about it. Pray about it. That is actually a spiritual protocol, okay? 
Recognize as well, when you are in peace, what you can do is you can recognize the voice of the serpent, okay? The enemy is often described as a snake or a serpent. He has this tendency of moving like a python, the spirit of python. He's like slow and stealth and gradually chokes you. That's what he does. Fun, right? No, never. You need to be in a place where you can recognize the voice of the serpent and use your authority. Are you just going to let a snake choke you? I don't think so, right? You're actually going to stand firm and talk back. Shut it down, right? We have this power to bind and to loose. We have authority over the enemy. We don't just let the enemy walk through our front door and wreak havoc on our lives. We shut it down. We use our authority. But when you're not in peace, you don't recognize that as readily, right? You don't know that you're just swept up into deception when you've lost your peace. Isaiah 26, 3 says, God keeps those in perfect peace whose minds are fixed on him. So when you are determined to keep your focus on God, he will give you peace because you're trusting in him. You're not trusting in worry. You're not trusting in emotion. You're not trusting in your logic and reasoning. You're not trusting in the opinions of man or a news report. You're trusting in the Lord. And when you remind yourself what God said, you're no longer concerned about the world's report or opinions of man. You just stay fixed on God. His report is the report. In Psalm 119, 165, it says, Abundant peace belongs to those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. Peace is a weapon. Are you seeing it? Situations with God are highly subject to change. So you might hear a report. There might be a real circumstance that freaks you out. But circumstances and situations with God are highly subject to change. So now, just like you were thinking about what you were like when you were afraid, on the flip side, consider what are you like when you're at peace? Who are you when you have divine peace? Cool as a cucumber, chill, unworried, unbothered. You ain't tripping. Now, it's not that you don't have reasons to be freaked out. It's not that you don't have circumstances that you would love answers to, but you're choosing peace and peace is a choice. Isaiah 26, 12 said, the Lord establishes this for us. So when we are in peace, God starts establishing us and our world. Okay, so number one, if you want to embrace supernatural acceleration in your life, pursue, pursue divine peace. Number two, pursue and operate from the wisdom of God. Okay, from the wisdom of God. You need the presence and the wisdom of God to make the correct decisions. Not good decisions, not practical decisions, the correct decisions. Because even if you make a quote unquote good decision, that doesn't mean that it's a God decision. There's a difference. Sometimes those might line up, sometimes they might not. You need to know the difference. You need God to make the correct decisions. The correct decision is often not the easiest one, and it's probably going to seem like the craziest one unless you have faith, okay? God will ask us to do some pretty outlandish things, right? Like if we were to go talk to a lawyer or an accountant, they would probably think we're nuts, okay, until it happens. (laughs) It's only crazy until it happens, right? But people especially people that are not faith walking, are going to give you a bad report. They're going to give you their fear and project that all over you and freak you out. You cannot be available for that. And so you don't invite people into that. I have a very interesting policy with myself where I'm not telling my people my business. I'm telling prayer partners my business. Some people are in an inner circle from Courage Co. that might know some of what's happening here behind the scenes, if they're in the mastermind or the life coach certification program, they might hear some different stories, right? But that's privileged information. I don't let just anybody know what I'm working on or how I'm moving because not everybody can handle it. Not everybody knows how to pray. Some people know how to gossip. They know how to instill fear. They know how to be bitter. They know how to Get all sort of messy, and I don't need that in my life, especially when I'm risking and stepping out into some big things. The same is true for you, okay? People are not going to understand crazy decisions that you make, and often we have to stretch. Our faith is going to be tested, right? How we move, our dependency, our trust, 
that will be tested. You can be like, I trust God. Do you? (laughs) God's going to make sure that you do and give you a nice test to see if that actually is what you mean. Okay. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, God has good plans for you. Okay. Good plans. Good plans. And his whole intention is to get you there into the good plans. All right. We might drift. We might get off course. But God's intention is to get you into the good plans that he has for you. But without the wisdom of the Lord, you're going to rely on your own understanding. You're going to take your own steps and walk your own path. Only the wisdom of God will produce supernatural results. So I know for the longest time in my life, I was a high achiever, right? Like I was daring greatly in life. (laughs) I was taking big risks, probably more out of just being naive and hoping for the best. That's not wisdom. (laughs) I I do believe that I was protected in a lot of these things uh, because God loves me, but this is before I even knew the Lord, right? So I was high achieving, but I never felt like even in all the accomplishments, even in all the achieving, that I was progressing. Can you hear the difference? Like I was knocking a lot of stuff off. I definitely had a full calendar. I was being busy, right? I was making things happen, but I didn't feel like I was fulfilled. I didn't have any peace. I didn't feel like I was advancing or getting anywhere. I just kept feeling like I just kept, it's almost like the mentality of throwing spaghetti at the wall and hoping for the best. So you accomplish something and you're like, but I didn't get forward. I just got that done. Maybe I learned some lessons, but I'm still not moving forward in life. Wisdom of God causes you to get supernatural results. The, the divine exchange rate is insane, right? It doesn't make sense. It's just God. So like we will sow a little bit of time and God will maximize it. Or we will give God like our, our talent and we'll work what's in our hand and God will multiply it. And you're like, what? It does not make sense. And so supernatural results and outcomes only come from operating in the wisdom of God, walking in step with him. They don't come from white knuckling it and all of your hustle. That is not how the kingdom works. So ask and he will give wisdom to you. When you don't have it, that's not a place of shaming yourself or feeling bad. God wants you to come boldly to him and just ask him for it. He doesn't judge you. He delights in you asking for help and he will give you wisdom. James 1, 5, Proverbs 2, 6, Proverbs 8, 17. These are all speaking about how the Lord wants you to seek him. He wants you to. Daniel 2.22 talks about how God gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. And if you apply wisdom, he gives you more. If you apply discernment, he gives you more. Okay, so he keeps blessing you. And this will directly affect your promotion and whatever season that you're in. Applying wisdom directly connects to promotion and advancement. Absolutely, it does. He will put you in an empowered position where you will make the correct decisions. When you seek God, when you get his wisdom, that's what he'll do. In Exodus 31.3, it says that wisdom is connected to ability and expertise. How powerful is that? You will, you will know how to use the talent and the treasure that God has hidden in you, his earthen vessel. He has hidden treasure in you, and he will help you unlock it and unleash it in the world. Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay, key word is heart. We want to think our way there, but we've got to drop into our heart and actually trust our way there, surrender our way there. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Make decisions then from the word of God, from the wisdom of God, from the direction of the Lord. Okay, number one, Pursue divine peace. Number two, pursue and operate from the wisdom of God. Number three, don't let feelings lead. We are a very highly emotional culture and generation. And this is only getting worse (laughs) with all the instant gratification and, you know, addictive hits that social media applies with all of the different reasons that people have to be emotional We're emotional, but we're not managing the emotions. We're not processing the emotions and it's getting dangerous, really dangerous because pent up emotion never comes out good. It'll come out like a volcano and outbursts of anger and rage and insanity. That is never good, let alone emotions are letting you know that your heart is sick. So if your heart is sick year after year after year because you think that you're dealing with it by drinking away, sleeping it away, binging it away numbing it away. You're not. You're actually just avoiding it and making it bigger. 
So we have got to learn about our emotions. A lot of people just talk about mental health, but we have got to have emotional intelligence and develop emotional maturity. Supporting yourself through feeling emotions is a big deal. Feelings are never something that are supposed to be fixed. We don't just get rid of them and we don't fix them. We feel them. And you have to feel to heal and you have to feel to understand what's not working in your operating system. Okay? So don't let your feelings lead. Reference the Bible, not your feelings. You need something that is stable, that is solid, that can really stand up against opinions and lies and feelings and emotions. Something that is solid. And that is the truth. That is the word of God. 2 Timothy 3, in general, talks about what the world looks like in this time. I don't know if you've heard it. It does not sound good. It sounds like a rated R movie. I can pull it for you. Let's see. Um, da, da. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's, it's gnarly. It's literally what we're seeing in the world right now. You ready? <sighs> Characteristics of the last days, shall we? But you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce. People will be self-centered lovers of themselves and obsessed with money. Huh. They will boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride and mock all that is right. Interesting. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted and hateful and malicious slander. Man. Slaves to their desires, they will be ferocious, belligerent haters of what is good and right. With brutal treachery, they will act without restraint, bigoted and wrapped in clouds of their conceit. They will find their delight in the pleasures of this world more than the pleasures of the loving God. They may pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. Stay away from people like these. For they are the ones who worm their way into the hearts of vulnerable women, spending the night with those who are captured with their lusts and steeped in sin. They are always learning, but never discover the revelation knowledge of truth. Yikes. Yikes, right? Just yikes. Okay, but here's the thing. That's a lot. It says, actually, if you keep going in 2 Timothy 3.17, that all scripture is God-breathed, okay? So it's breathed by God. It's inspired by God and teaches us what is right and wrong. It's profitable. All scripture, that means Old Testament and New Testament is profitable for learning, okay? And it will teach us what is wrong is what is right so that we're not deceived and so that we don't look like any of what I just read to you, okay? God prepares us for every good work, right? He's prepared good works, prepared in advance that we might walk in them. So he prepares the works, he's already prepared them, and now he's preparing us for the work. And all scripture is profitable to help us life, (laughs) to help us live. We can't rely on feelings and opinions. Those are fickle, they will change all the time. You could be one way today, another thing in the morning, another thing in the afternoon. You'll be all over the place if you're trusting your emotions. But all scripture is profitable, not emotions. Hebrews 4.12 said, the word is alive and it is supernatural. So when you're reading, the Holy Spirit will reveal the word to you. You're reading the word of God and you're not designed to read it just for head knowledge. When you're reading it, you literally can talk with the Holy Spirit, invite him to reveal that word to you, to highlight that word to you, to help break it down so that you have an understanding that you couldn't otherwise get without God. And then you understand it, it gets into your heart, you start integrating it into your being so that you can go live it in the world. And when you live it is actually when you grasp the revelation, the fullness of the revelation. Because if you just read it and have some head knowledge and think that you got it, you're not going to go live that. That didn't change you. It's got to actually transform you and then you go live it and then you actually transform somebody else. Okay? Example of this. Let's say that you get a revelation that you are not a orphan, right? You don't have this orphan spirit, but you're actually a child of God. Okay? When you picture an orphan or a foster child, they act very different than one that is aware that they're loved and deeply cared for, okay? A foster child, an orphan, right? Even those that have been adopted a lot of times, they've got so many wounds, abandonment, betrayal, rejection. So they test people. They don't trust people, 
they rebel. You're not going to love me, right? Like they're very testy. And we do that to God, but then you can't ever receive love. You keep pushing it away and you don't trust anybody. But a lot of us live that way with God specifically. But when you get a revelation of what a word says, right? God calls us sons. Okay? So if you are actually God's child, if you you can read that and be like, mm, yeah, cool, great. But that doesn't actually mean anything to you. Like people talk about that all the time, but they don't get that what it means. But if you actually get that you are God's child, whom he loves, who he cares for, right? That you're fully loved, guided, led, supported, cared for, protected, covered by God, right? Then you start, when you get that in your spirit and you start living like that, your identity changes, your self-esteem changes, your confidence changes, your composure changes, your behavior changes, how you carry yourself changes because you start walking like royalty. You set boundaries. You start valuing yourself because if God values you, now you can value you. You start honoring yourself because God honors you. You start delighting in yourself. You actually think that you're a cool human that's fun to hang out with and you don't need other people to validate that for you. You get your significance for God. So you finally start feeling significant. You're not trying to go perform for it or prove for it. You can actually be a happy human with a lot of extra energy. That is a revelation though. And that is something that you live and you learn in time from trusting God and from believing what he says. And the Holy Spirit will start breaking that down for you. If you just read it and it does nothing for you, it'll do nothing in your life. Same thing. We really learn about love through God expressing it through us to other people, okay? We could say we're loving all day, but how you treat people is really a reflection of if you love or not. If you have a revelation of God's love or not is how you treat other people. <sighs> so if, for example, you're full of God's love because he's just been pull it, pouring it into you and you've been a great receiver of that, now you go give from that overflow and you're able to express love to somebody else. You're able to forgive them. You're able to see them the way God sees them. You're able to walk with them and care for them and honor them and value them. You're starting to see how God loves you through loving somebody else. And it's incredibly humbling. But you don't really know that until you have a mirror. Relationships are mirrors. Okay? Really, really big deal. Okay? So the word is alive and supernatural. And Holy Spirit will give us revelation of that word. And that is what you want to be walking and depending on, not your feelings. Psalm 45, 3, Jeremiah 23, 29, essentially say this. When you build your life on the word of God, the word will build your life, right? Unless the Lord builds the house, it won't stand. You might get some traction, but that thing's fallen. It's inevitable. <laughs> so why not just build on the rock so that it'll stand? That sounds like a much better idea. And lastly, number four, stay close to God. John 15, 5 talks about how a relationship with God is a reciprocal relationship. So God will meet you in your pursuit. He'll meet you in your pursuit. If you're not pursuing him, you're not going to have a connection with him. That's as simple as it is. He is available, ready to meet with you, delights in meeting with you. All God ever asks from you is intimacy with him, right? He's ready. He's waiting. He's available. But are you pursuing? Are you pursuing? So based on your desire, your hunger, your pursuit, the priority that you put on your relationship with God, that's going to be what God reciprocates back to you. Matthew 13, 21 and Hebrews 10, 25. They talk about also meeting together with the body of Christ. Okay, so getting around the body, getting around believers, having fellowship, having connection, having community is so vital to your well-being so that you can be encouraged, that you can be covered, that you can be prayed for, right? Because what the devil is always trying to do is get you alone to weaken you, okay? God might want to get you alone so he can have time with you, and that's consecration, but the devil wants you to have isolation. So you're by yourself, you're caught up in your thoughts, you're caught up in your emotions, you're caught up in all these opinions and lies and these narratives that don't serve you in any kind of way. You're storing up all sorts of funky stuff in your heart. You're watching all sorts of bad stuff on the TV that is not building up your spirit at all. It's actually wasting your life and sucking energy out of you. And then you're supposed to function? I don't think so. That actually has zero return on investment, right? So now you're just where the enemy wants you, broke, busted, and disgusted. And then you're supposed to perform and advance your life. That's not how that works. You have to be around people that can build you up, that can encourage you. You have to have the right things in your spirit so that they will come out of you. Your inflow 
is going to create your outflow. So if you don't have the right inflow, then what you sow is not going to help you and you're gonna get a harvest of whatever you sow. The harvest is coming. It's really important that you pay attention to what you're sowing. So if you wanna accelerate, here's the four things. Number one, pursue divine peace. People with peace have the most power. Two, pursue and operate from the wisdom of God. Three, do not let your feelings lead. And four, stay close to God. Stay humble, stay low, stay in love, stay in alignment. This is why I say all the time, God's vibes matter. This is all about how you can align and track with God and all you think, say, and do. But when you put these things together, when you have peace, what does this mean? This means that you're not ruminating on things in your mind. Your mind is not constantly inundated with all these thoughts. You're not giving in to worry. You're not indulging in emotions. You're just sitting in them. You're feeling them. You're processing them with God. And God is helping you manage those. He's giving you almost like emotional resilience could be the word. Like I'm not afraid of emotion. Therefore, I'm a powerful person. If my emotions don't control me and I can feel any emotion without freaking out, I can feel anything and be okay. Literally. Okay, I shared on the prayer call, I had like the, my greatest kind of like a Job moment, right? Where your greatest fear comes upon you. (laughs) He's like, the things I fear have come upon me. Yep, I've lived that, okay? And that was really hard and devastating. The grief, the shock, the betrayal, the rejection, the sadness, the devastation, the discouragement, the weakness, all of that, felt all of that, all of that. And nobody had any idea, okay? And I'm deep and I'm invested in this and God knows, right? It's just debilitating. But if I could feel that and God could work on my heart and walk me through that and still purify me in the process, right? Like I'm determined to keep a pure heart no matter what I've walked through. And God can cleanse my heart and purify my heart. And I walked through that. I'm not afraid of that thing anymore, The thing that once terrified me, I've made it on the other side of, right? So when you think about that, if you can feel any emotion and it doesn't break you, it's a really powerful position to be in. Now you don't go out seeking those things, but then you don't live your life fearing them either, okay? So it's a really powerful position to be in when your mind isn't constantly ruminating on worry or your emotions aren't taking you for a ride, right? You're just using them as intel. Oh, this information I can take to God. Our emotions are just meant to point us to God. They're exposing a heart issue, right? They're exposing an insecurity, an insufficiency, a need, and we take it to God. When it gets exposed, when it's highlighted, when it's revealed to us, then we go take it to God and he tells us what to do with it. I've done so many studies in the word, right? Like if you're feeling fear, one, I'll go study and say and see everything that God says about fear, A lot of times it's like, do not fear, do not fear. I'm like, okay, what do I do instead? Be strong and very courageous. Okay, how do I do that? Help me do that, God, right? So I'm literally just studying and taking God at his word and then trusting that he's going to work. He's going to work. I don't have to know how he's going to do it. I'm just going to trust that he's going to do it. And we get caught up in this tyranny of how. God's job is the how. Your job is never the how. You just have to believe that he'll do it. So that's why a lot of times when I'm praying, I'm thanking God in advance for what he's going to do. Thank you, God, that you give me a Holy Spirit second wind right now if I'm tired. I don't need a coffee or an Advil. Thank you, God, that you give me a Holy Spirit second wind in Jesus' name, right? And then I'm just trusting that it'll catch and it does, right? So that is something that's available to us, okay? So if you're in peace, right, if you're moving in wisdom, that means you're making the correct decision. So you're not actually having to deal with a lot of consequences of the messy wrong decisions, When we make the wrong decisions, we get a mess to clean up. There are consequences to the wrong decisions. God will still guide you, but there are consequences to wrong decisions. So when you're moving in peace, when you're moving in wisdom, right, you're at peace. You're not wasting time caught up in unnecessary processing. So you're not burning out your system. You're not on overdrive all the time. You're not just living in stress all the time. Then you're making wise decisions. So you're saving a heck of a lot of time. Then you're not letting your feelings manipulate you. You're just letting them point you and direct you to God and taking the wisdom that they have to offer you. 
And you're around community that's encouraging you and building you up and keeping you strong and accountable. So you're actually advancing. You're progressing in life. And compared to an average human, you are leaps and bounds ahead of somebody that is freaking out all the time, making excuses, ruminating in their mind, getting caught up in their emotions, weighed down by everything in their heart constantly caught up in their feelings, making a mess in the wrong decision. So they're always in a crisis that they got to get out of. And then they not, can't get out of that crisis until they're in another one. And then they're not around community and they're super negative as all get out. And then they just try to keep going and function. What? There's no advancement in that. There's just more stuck. It's a bigger hole. That's what that is, right? So when you actually apply the truth to your life, you will accelerate it causes you to accelerate supernaturally, okay? So my encouragement to you today is to start investigating, evaluating, reflecting on where are you? Just do a quick assessment in your life. And I have actually all the notes here. So if you want to go into Courage Co., you can join us, www.courageco.org. Go to in the left dashboard once you log in. Since this is an app, you have to put your name in there, um, and your email, and it'll just create like a unique profile. You can put a picture in there so we can see your face, tell us a little bit about you. But once you do that and get in there, then you can go in the left dashboard and there's bi-monthly prayer calls. And then it's in there. The recording's in there. You can go listen. All of the notes are in there with the scripture. So what I encourage you to do, re-listen to this message if you need to, investigate. These are keys that unlock your destiny. These are kingdom keys, spiritual keys that are unlocking the word of God, the promises of God for you in your life. And if you work the protocol, the protocol will work you. (laughs) It'll work through you. You will get the outcomes. You will get supernatural outcomes in your life. So if that sounds interesting to you and like what you want to pursue, go get into Courage Co. Go back and re-listen to these scriptures Okay, and apply this. How are you in peace on a scale of one to 10? How peaceful are you? How much of God's peace do you have? 10 being like, I'm full of it. I'm overflowing, baby. And one being like, I ain't got nothing. I got no peace. I got no peace, right? Number two, how much wisdom do you operate in every day? And again, there's no good, bad, right or wrong. We're not shaming here. This is literally how much wisdom are you walking in every day? Are you walking in the opinions of man? Are you walking in the news? Are you walking in pressure? Are you walking in the fear of man? The fear of man is always a snare. That's why we need to fear God. This is about who you honor, who you respect, who you prioritize, who you give life to. So for example, many, like back in 2020, many people had their integrity put on the line. Were they going to make a decision to decide what they're going to do with their body or were they going to fall into peer pressure so that they don't lose their job that is not a position that you want to be in right that doesn't sound like a godly setup at all or godly leadership right now you have to decide are you going to make decisions that constantly break your integrity every single day because once you start that path it's a hard one to get out of Or are you going to make decisions that honor you and support you and build integrity momentum in your life so you actually get energy in life and you actually respect yourself and honor yourself? Really important. We have to think about these decisions. So how much wisdom are you operating in? Then when you move on, what about your feelings? Right now, can you just sit and let yourself feel them without trying to fix them or just get over it? We don't just get over feelings. We feel them. We don't fix them. Don't make them wrong. Like you can't control if you have a feeling come up, but you have to absolutely feel it. You can't repress it, hide it, shove it down, act like you're above it somehow. It's real. It needs your attention. Okay, if all these signals were coming on in your car, you don't keep driving. You you actually address it, right? Sit with the emotion. Don't make it wrong. Voice it. Give life to it. If you're not able to do that, I know for many, many years, I went to therapy and coaching. Okay, I went to therapy to figure out what the heck was going on (laughs) and get a grid and a language for even what I was experiencing. And then I went to coaching to do something about it, you know, because you can get caught up into a place where you just sit in it for, for far too long. But you need to get into a place where you do something about it. You actually take action. Okay, and then do you have community around you? Do you have support around you? Now, listen, it can be the scariest thing to root yourself in community. And I get it. I get it. Okay. I was very fearful of that. Uh, I came from a broken home. I came from multiple sets of parents that 
didn't nurture me, support me, invest in me. I had no sense of home, no reality of home. There was no safety. There was no security. There was no nurturing. There was no development. None of that. Okay. So I know what it's like to be neglected now. (laughs) God has allowed me to create a community right? Where, where love is flowing. People are connecting. They're praying for each other. They have spiritual running buddy relationships. They're meeting with each other. They're connecting with each other. They're texting each other, praying for each other. So many things are happening because they dared to not stay in this place of being alone and isolated. They dared to get around people. They dared to take me out of their email trash. They dared to listen to what is happening on this podcast and actually do something about it. They dared. So I just challenge you And I encourage you to get the support and help you need. Stop acting like you're okay. Stop acting like you're good if you're not. It is a human need to have connection and community. We actually heal in community. Okay? And a lot of the people that are in there are leaders. They're leaders. They're coaches. They are the good-hearted, servant-hearted people that are out in the arena taking hits every day. And they need encouragement too. So I just encourage you to step into that space and find out what can happen when you go all in with God, who he connects you to. None of it's random. It's not random that you ended up here. It's not random that you're hearing this word today. The real question is, what are you going to do about it? We don't get exposed to something randomly. We get exposed to something because we're now responsible for it. It's on us now to respond well to what we're receiving because so many people aren't so blessed. So many people are not so fortunate to receive tools, to receive strategies, to receive wisdom, to receive sound counsel, to receive care. People actually caring about you, your breakthrough, your transformation, people praying for you, that is a love language. People actually caring about you, pausing and releasing abundant blessings over your life. What? (laughs) Come on. So this is really a no-brainer. My encouragement, re-listen to this. Come join us in Courage Co. Stay in community. Stay in support. And we'll keep giving you so many practical tips and tools to help you be strong and very courageous in your life and to help you live your most courageous and impactful story. All right? We've got all these programs on sale. So this would be a really great day. Okay, it's only today for for Valentine's Day for Love Month to just love on yourself. The greatest gift you can give yourself is investing in you. That's the greatest gift that you can give everybody connected to you, right? We do not help people when we stay in our own pit. We don't, okay? We've got to go through our own process and then get to a place where we can really release so many blessings from what happened in that process, okay? So I encourage you to get in process. Come join us. Come hang with us in Courage Co. www.courageco.org. And until next time, stay blessed. Listen, if you are not plugged into Courage Co. yet, what are you doing? Courage Co. is a faith-based community off social media that you can access from your phone or your desktop literally from anywhere. It is a safe place and a sacred space for you to invest in and live your most courageous and impactful story. You can join us for free for prayer calls and challenges, for a monthly subscription where we have monthly masterclasses, or the God's Vibes Mastermind, where you will get live master life coaching at a price that you won't get anywhere else. 12 weeks of content that we will go through together, or you can navigate at your own pace. You'll have lifetime access to that. A community of women doing this alongside of you, a workbook, and so many other materials to help you on your journey. And I just want you to imagine for a second, having the courage, clarity, and focus to achieve anything you desire. Walking into any situation, fully confident, knowing you have everything you need to succeed. Embracing challenges and overcoming obstacles with grace and ease. Feeling only love and compassion for others, no matter how they may have hurt you in the past. Standing up for what you believe in and taking unstoppable action to create the kind of world you want to live in. You're in the right place to take your next step on your journey. When you plug into the God's Vibes Mastermind, I'll teach you how to identify and eliminate the self-limiting beliefs and habits that are stopping you from getting the results you want. 
I'll teach you how to heal old wounds that have negatively impacted your self-image and self-esteem for far too long. I'll show you how to dismantle the story of who you are and what you can or cannot do in the world. I'll help you expand your consciousness from fear-based limitation to love and compassion and service to the world. I'll help you vanquish the inner enemies that are stopping you from being all that you can be. Release your victimhood and reclaim your power. Develop a aligned mindset and habits to boost your productivity and results. Gain deeper awareness of your own inner light and divinity and achieve the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual self-mastery needed to achieve any goal. You will learn how to think the way God formed, shaped, and anointed you to think and succeed the way he always intended and show up in any situation as the most powerful person in the room, no matter what challenges might appear on your path. If this sounds like something that you want to be a part of, I want to invite you to join the God's Vibes Mastermind. You can get plugged into it over at Courage Co. You can access Courage Co. at any level at www.courageco.org. Together, we will awaken your inner warrior spirit and unleash your capacity to achieve any goal you can imagine. You will become an example of what's possible with God.